and welcome to another episode of The Acting Zone. I'm your host, Fitz Houston, and as always, we have a great show lined up for you today. And if you've been watching the show, we've not only been showing you excerpts of plays and different techniques about acting, I've been decided to actually have different writers actually on the show so you can actually meet some of the minds and writers behind some of the plays we've been talking about and you've been watching. Today, my special guest is Mr. Ron Daniels, welcome to the show, Ron. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, Ron and I, we, we've been we've been friends for a number of years, uh, both brothers, as uh, you picked up on the other show, because we work together in a project called Satch. Not only did we work together in Satch, but we work together in Money, Money Man. Man. Money Man, Satch, That's, and then yeah. the you got another one you keep telling me about too. So. Oh, one on Rube Foster, <laughs> the resurrection of Rube. Yeah, yeah. It's coming down the pipe, man. Just <laughs> as soon as it gets ready, you'll be getting first shot at uh, it. Oh, I can't wait, because yeah. cause I think I was I always share with the audience with both your writings, you know, your piece is always exciting to, to get into, because you always give actors something to chew on. And, 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 and being a part of history, it's Sash now. Tell me more about Sash because that's the one that's really uh, uh, from you, us talking that has really been close to your heart for a number of years. Yeah, well, you know, Sash was an interesting project uh, from the standpoint that uh, it grew out of a question that uh, I, my uncle used to own the Chattanooga Black Lookouts. Oh, okay. And uh, he um, used to take me and my brother to the baseball games to see the Mobile Bears okay. when we were young. This was during the 50s. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day out of the clear blue sky, uh, he asked us who Satchel Page was. Right. And at that time, Jackie Robinson had just broken into the major leagues, and every black kid in America, <laughs> or every kid in America, right. probably wanted to be Jackie. Right, right. You know, I mean, it was particularly black kids, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because he was not only a sign of uh, uh, athletic success, but also of social progress. Mm -hmm. And when my uncle asked us, had we heard of Satchel Page? We were taken aback because we hadn't. And for the next hour and 45 minutes, <laughs> he gave us a lesson on Satchel oh, Page. Oh, okay. And in the process, he defined himself because I had not, did not know that he was the owner and manager of the Chattanooga Black Lookouts. But anyway, he told us a story about an episode about how when Satch, he brought Satchel up, he gave him his first professional job, mm -hmm. and he brought him up to Chattanooga, and he became so popular, you know, Satch was really, in many respects, the Muhammad Ali right. of Negro baseball. Okay. I mean, he drew crowds, he drew, he kept baseball, Negro baseball alive financially. The chronology, the chronology of, of Jackie and Satch, Satch was already, already, was he already, already playing at that time? Yeah, but he was playing in the Negro, uh, Negro, League. Negro Leagues, actually, uh, and, and in fact, uh, and, and, and Jackie hadn't even been brought up when Satch started playing mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, that was 1927 when he was pitching for my uncle okay. in Chattanooga Black Lookout. Oh, wow, okay. And, 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 and Jackie didn't make it into the majors, I think, until 1947. Right. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the, you know, issues was that, you know, people always said that Satch should have been the first. Right, but because he's drawing crowds. You said in the oh, 20s yeah. he's drawing oh, yeah. crowds. But you know, getting back to the, the main storyline of how Satch evolved as a play, he told us this story about uh, how after Satch became popular, he was drawing all these crowds, that the owner of the Chattanooga White Lookouts mm -hmm. came to the ballpark and actually tried to persuade Satch to pitch for him, <laughs> but <laughs> under the condition. Right. You know, because this is the segregated soft in right. 1927. Yeah. Under the condition that he go out there in blackface, and very much wait, like wait, wait, a black man go out in blackface. Yeah, well, you know what? That's what Williams and Walker did. That's right. That's the right. comedy team. That's right. The real coons. Right. They uh, mimicked uh, the white comics mm -hmm. who were mimicking them in blackface by putting blackface on themselves. A blackface. <laughs> yeah, you know, and wow. that was the that was the convention of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and. My, and uh, my uncle talked him out of it, and so the whole play is about this dilemma Satch has between breaking his uh, loyalty and breaching his, uh, you know, his contract with my uncle mm -hmm. to go with St Strand Nicklin, this was the guy's name, right. or to stay there and mm -hmm. pitch for my uncle and remain loyal to him, right. and and. And uh, so it becomes the crisis that he has to weather 
right. during the course of the play. And that's, and that's one of the clips you have. Uh, yeah, it actual. is. Matter of fact, let's take a look at that. This is one where you have a uh, strand entering the clubhouse, and this, this is the scene that he's actually uh, having his first talk in the Satch. Right now, he actually confronts my uncle first. Okay. Satch hasn't arrived yet. Okay. One of the techniques I leave, I, 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 I use in the play, which was characteristic of Satch in real life, mm -hmm. is that he was intentionally late <laughs> for a lot of games because he he was a master theater. So he had, actually knew he was the bomb. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And so, so he, he worked, worked the moment. <laughs> he, yeah, he worked the moment like you say in acting, <laughs> a dramatic delay. Okay, okay. And he would he would hold the audience in suspense and everybody wondering where is that? Where is that? <laughs> People saying, where is that? Is he coming? Is he going to show up? So and all of a sudden, out of clear blue sky, you understand right. me? Show sure enough. Here comes Satch about two innings after the game had started. <laughs> but that was all in Intentional. Right. So he had a habit of doing that in order to build up the audience's anticipation of him. You okay, know? because he knew that everybody was a master there to, showman, and man. There, people were there to see him. He was actually trying to get Satch. That, that, that's the basic behind that. Right. His he wanted to buy him. Oh, but that's, okay. You know, with that ultimatum. Right. Right. That if he put blackface on. Right. Okay. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah, but he didn't mention that in, in the Ellie. Right. He, you know, he wanted to, to buy him at that point. I mean, uh, that he wanted him to go out in blackface at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, he just was fishing to see if Alec was vulnerable to selling him at that point. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, you know, they found out mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, Strand found out that he, you know, that he wasn't about to let go his meal ticket right. for the whole team because, <laughs> I mean, Satch was the one who was actually drawing the crowds for the Chattanooga Black Lookouts, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, he ultimately uh, came back mm -hmm. after Eric and his cohort, the, the sidekick dog, kicked him out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He actually came back, you know, and uh, and tried to persuade him. Right. You right, know, right. and that's at that point he made the offer five hundred dollars, but under the condition that he go out in blackface. So, <laughs> so that's that's amazing. Now, now Satch's reaction, of course, uh, n knowing that you have an opportunity to go to a, uh, a white club that actually would, of course, be more exposure. From a showman point of view, how does Satch react to that as far as... Uh, well, you know, he was a young man. Uh, Satch, you got to understand his conditions under which he uh, came out of, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, his folks were very impoverished. Mm -hmm. And back then, most African Americans in Mobile were impoverished. but. Uh, they were especially improvised, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, he uh, uh, had gone, been sent to reformatory school as a result of stealing, and, mm -hmm. and I got a feeling that the stealing was out of necessity <laughs> as, to eat as opposed to stealing for the, you know, like most mm -hmm. kids mm -hmm. today do, steal. By necessity, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I need of, to eat. Uh, yeah, yeah. Out, of, out of mischief and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but he, uh, so the offer of that kind of cash money, mm -hmm. Uh, to a young man who's just starting out in life, whose values had not been formed and who, whose core values had not been uh, solidified, mm -hmm. uh, was a tremendous uh, uh, dilemma mm -hmm. for him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And in the play, what I try to do is that I try to show uh, him wavering between doing what is uh, ethically mm -hmm. and ethnically right right because right. you know at that point in time there were black people who did oppose these uh bunt cock type of image you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. uh and Eric was one of those people that was he was a follow of w.e.b du bois uh who uh condemned all of that type of catering to the sensibilities of white people uh and you know so uh so Satch had to either make a decision to abide by the conventions of the times and make so-called financial progress mm -hmm. uh, or to wait till the time came when white America would accept black people as baseball players in right. and of themselves, as, okay. you know, as human beings. Mm -hmm.